Hey folks, my name is Musical Conman, and this is my first Let's Play of a game I love very much called The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. If you've played the game before or watched Let's Plays of it before, you'll have a basic idea of how this game works. I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in and let's get started. So I'm playing as Eden, will give me two random starting items. So that's PJs, which is a lot of HP, excellent starting, and Glowing Hourglass, which if I take some stupid damage here, I can just rewind that, and there's a few other ways to min-max it, but I won't be grinding my donation machine on a Let's Play. Alright, um, and let's take a moment to look at our starting stats. Okay, as I expected, damage is good, speed isn't great, but isn't awful either. And tier rate is only one bar, but I've seen it be a lot worse on one bar, so this is a very good start. Uh, that was... you know what? I can just rewind that. That was not good damage, but hey, it never happened. Okay, that was Justice. the exact same mistake twice, and I have no excuse for that, it was just fun. So, a little background. Obviously, this is not my first time playing the game, though it is my first time recording it like this. I've got 500-something hours in this game, so I generally expect to win most runs unless it's... <sighs> Sorry, talking distracted me. Win most runs unless it's a really difficult run or a challenge character like the Lost or Keeper. So talking about this run so far. It's a very strong start. Nothing game-breaking, but a lot of building blocks to get us set up for later, because one of the challenges on an Eden streak is just dying early on if you don't get good items and have no HP, but we have plenty of damage. Obviously, this won't do much for us later on, but this damage will carry us through at least two or three floors without having it hurt too much to kill bosses. And this HP means we really shouldn't be at any risk of dying. We can easily take our first deal with the devil. And with Glowing Hourglass, even if we make some really silly mistake, we'll still be fine. So, let me get out of the way here. Almost walked into the bomb rock, but... Hey, I have glowing hourglass. I wouldn't have taken damage anyway. Oh. The haunt is annoying. If I take damage on the haunt with this much HP, if it's just one damage, I probably won't use glowing hourglass. Because... Oh, that was a bad bomb, though. Because I don't want to fight the haunt six times in a row. Even if I didn't waste a bomb. Okay, that was good. Got through the most difficult part, now just the tedious part. Wow, I did not deserve to not get the hit there, but Halo of Flies is a stalwart friend. So we're fighting Haunt. If you haven't played The Binding of Isaac before, well, this is an interesting place to start, but you play as Isaac, or in this case, a different character, Eden, making their way through the basement after their mother tries to kill them and fighting all sorts of nasty creatures and bosses, a lot of interesting biblical undertones, like with the original story of Abraham and Isaac. Okay, this is a lot of damage, but I don't want to do that whole fight again with this damage, so we're just gonna... I recognize I could use Glowing Hourglass, we're just gonna move on. So, Isaac jumps into the basement, and then a lot of nasty, funny, and most of all, well-designed from a gameplay standpoint stuff comes up from there. Got roguelike elements, so if I die, that's it. All these items go away and I'll have to start again, but... If I can get some damage here, I should not be at any risk of dying on this run. Unless, of course, I have... Nine lives, or Judas and Shadow, and one two. Um, nothing in here we want, so let's just eat that half spirit heart lost and not have to walk out the door. No, nope, nothing. 
I didn't see any tinted rocks there. I could have missed it with the Curse of Darkness, but... I don't think there were any. Oops. So it was my first time really doing a Let's Play and recording while talking. I am noticing that I'm making some dodges that aren't quite as good as I might if I were, but also I'm just a little out of rex in the game. and It's fine to take some damage every now and then, as long as it doesn't ruin the run, prevent me from getting a deal with the devil, but right now with a red heart and four and a half spirit hearts, I could take two deals with the devil and still have some breathing room. Not as much as I'd like, but that's if there are two deals I want and I don't get any more HP between them. Alright. Lemon party. Not good enough, but let's shoot this poop in case there's money. I'm not going to shoot every poop, but I'll shoot some of them. Uh, I mean, Lemon Party is okay in the early game. As a matter of fact, I'm sorry, not Lemon Party, Lemon Mishap. As a matter of fact, I'd go ahead and say it's quite useful against a lot of early game bosses. Uh, early game bosses, but later on, it just really isn't going to be worth carrying with you. And I think Glowing Hourglass just has more potential in the future. Lemon Mishap might make our lives a bit easier once or twice, but later in the game, ooh, if I can blow these guys up, you know, and that's exactly what I wanted to happen, so two bombs. Lemon Mishap just isn't quite good enough to take compared to Glowing Hourglass, so let's go roll with that. I am going to use these bombs before I fight the boss to go see what's in this hopefully Isaac's bedroom. A black market would be pretty nice. Um, nope, that's just going to be a portal to the next floor. Oh well. With the number of bombs we have, it's I'd say it's still worth the investment to have tried. Alright, we're going to be fighting Little Horn. Pretty easy boss, as long as I don't get distracted or bored while fighting him and take damage for no reason. All his attacks are very dodgeable. It may take a little while to kill, but hopefully this deal with the devil will solve that problem pretty soon. I do wish he would jump the next one of his own bombs and do a little work for me, but I understand if he wants to cling to life a little longer. He hasn't got that long. This is an interesting boss fight, because I don't know of any other mechanic in the game that works quite like that Shadow Ball does. And for that matter, I just really like the visual effect of the Shadow Ball, just the little smoke trail it leaves behind it just looks cool. Um, I'm going to not take the HP. Wow, two Guppy items, so I'm going to take nine lives, Guppy's hairball, and leave with the exact same amount of HP we started with. Um, we have enough keys. So, I'm going to say that Flatworm is more interesting to look at, and we're probably not going to run out of keys, and we don't have money to go to the shop. So that deal with the Devil did not solve our damage problem right now, but it might give us the resources to absolutely steamroll the run later on. Alright. Yeah, I can definitely tell fighting these guys that I'm about ready for a tiers or damage upgrade of some kind. Even if it's not a direct damage upgrade, I would be I would be okay with blood clot, delighted with corrosive liquid, or just something else that gives me a way to kill enemies faster. This particular run I would say Oh hey, I'm pretty happy with that dodge. This particular run I would say a direct damage upgrade is really what I'm looking for more than anything else just because of the chance of getting guppy and having our flies buffed that way. But I would rarely say no to corrosive liquid. Um wouldn't care about most familiars, but they could make it easier earlier in the game. Brother Bobby or something, obviously not a good item, not going to be useful later on. 
but it gets more of a bad rap than it deserves. It can be useful for the first three or four, well, two or three floors, just when you have no damage yet. You can deal that little bit. Obviously it doesn't scale, but I could be happy with Brother Bobby if we got Brother Bobby. Oh, and I was doing such good dodging this room. Since this took so long, I'm not going to rewind that. Because I can see myself doing worse the next time around. If we got Brother Bobby now, and that just tided us over until we got another guppy item in a curse room or deal with the devil, I would be perfectly happy. Offensively, this run has yet to pile off. The only damage upgrade we've gotten of any kind is Guppy's Hairball, and I really don't find Guppy's Hairball worth using. It's nice to have to block shots, and it may even do some incidental damage sometimes just from dodging, but just for me personally, whenever I try to use Guppy's Hairball to deal damage, I take a lot more damage than it's worth. Oh, see, it did kill a couple spiders there, which makes me want to try and use it, but... For now, I'm just going to let it be a nice passive effect. You know what? Just in ca case. Uh, two cents is not worth fighting that for, but... I'd say that was worth checking. Glowing Hourglass is a little tricky to min-max, but... I generally have a lot of fun with trying to figure out the best strategy to... get through a given gameplay thing. So let's kill these boom flies. And got our glowing hourglass charge back. This is an interestingly laid out floor. I wonder if there's going to be a second donut ring in there somewhere. And yeah, really not that much to complain about or be delighted about as of yet. It just really depends what we have here. Evil Eye, okay. That's a weird item. Can be very good, but hard to use properly. I feel like Evil Eye is one of those items that just adds another thing to keep track of on the screen. And it's good. I'm gonna go around to skip that room. Evil Eye is good when you pay attention and fire the shots from the extra damage source accurately, in the same way that Blue Baby's only friend might be good, but it's... that was not really good. <laughs> but it's something else to keep track of, and early on it's easy to use, but once you start to get other items, it becomes more easy to forget about this one. But I'm not knocking it, it's good. I think it's a creative design idea. I don't know... I don't have any suggestions for how I would improve it or anything. I, I think it fits pretty well where it is. It's useful. It's just that... It can be a little distracting to try and use properly. Let's shoot these red fires, because I am known to take damage on those. Wow, a lot of bombs and keys. Very little money this run, which... Hey, I'm okay with for now. We didn't take store key. Obviously, there's plenty of shop items that are nice, but nothing to worry about yet. We do have several bombs, but and that would chew through the Forsaken, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Wow, that did not do as much damage as I expected. We'll use another bomb, or just fight it out the rest of the way. You know, I think there's no reason to take damage on the Forsaken. Or at least that's what I normally think. I'm used to fighting them with more damage and thinking of it as kind of a pushover, but I guess at this point in the game, it can be a bit of a bother to deal with. Okay. Two bombs. Not necessarily cheap, but... Okay, but Alright, experimental treatment. Took away our HP. Looks like it really gave some boost to our damage. Our range is very high. Our fire rate... I'm going to say it seems a bit worse, but not that much. And you know, now that I think of it, I probably could have used this Judgment card to boost our deal with the Devil Chance on the last floor. Might have been a good min-max strategy there. It slipped my mind. Thank you, 
Halo of Flies or Guppy's Hairball, whatever protected me. Well, all three of those times. If I get Infamy and a Cube of Meat, I could probably just do Hush for free, because I'm really blocking a lot of shots right now. So defensively, this run is still doing pretty strong. Nine lives? No, not Buck Penny. Nine lives isn't going to do too much for us. It's not something I want to rely on, but nine lives is just a little extra. If everything goes wrong, we can hang in there for just a little longer. Nine, ri nine lives is not enough to save a run, but it's enough to keep a run going until it gets strong enough. Oh, that was, that was bad damage. Uh, nine lives is enough to just keep a run going until it gets something else, which is really good enough that, I mean, PJ's is a great starting item for that reason. Let's try not to step on the spikes here. It just gives us a lot of leeway to figure things out. Uh, nothing I can do about that one. But finally got him dead. And hey, I only took half spirit heart damage this time around, so as long as I don't let him shoot me, it was still a good use of glowing hourglass. I will do that curse room, because we have nine lives, and so although we have low HP, we don't really, it's not going to impede our ability to take a deal with the devil or survive. I will go to that curse room, but I want to get glowing hourglass charged first, so that if there's nothing worthwhile in the curse room, I can at least turn around, use Glowing Hourglass, not take damage going out the door. Small curse room. Um, tiny rooms I'm still getting used to, but ooh, that was very close. Does that mean no combat? Well, it did this time. Yeah, and so that was a good time to use Glowing Hourglass. Since we didn't like what was in there, we only had to use half a spear at heart to check it. And honestly, unless I'm really on the verge of death, or it's going to, or I'm on red hearts and it would cost me my deal with the devil precedent, I'm really inclined to check every curse room on this run because with two guppy items on the second floor, the potential is just too great for a clutch, guppy's tail, guppy's paw, anything from a red chest to turn our run completely around. Really, that's what we're doing right now. We are just coasting, waiting for Guppy. Sounds like a movie title, Waiting for Guppy. Or maybe I'm just thinking of Samuel Beckett waiting for Godot, which I've never seen, but I read about on TV tropes once. And seems like it's probably interesting. Anyway, a little money is nice. At this point, I would finally go to the shop. I'm going, not going to take damage here. I am going to use a bomb. That was well worth it just to s probably save us a spirit heart and or a lot of time redoing it with glowing hourglass. Okay, I am definitely looking to go to the shop for the first time. Haven't talked about it much, but our key supply has been really great and just really gives us a lot of potential to grow on in the future. Mom's wig is doing good work. I never really quite understand how this item works. I mean, I know it gives you spiders as you shoot or charge your brimstone or whatever, but I don't have quite a sense of how often that happens, but hey, nothing to complain about there. Some more good utility, and Mom's Wig is the first real damage upgrade we've gotten. We've gotten some great defense options with Nine Lives, Guppy's Hairball, and Halo of Flies, but this is our first real chance to do just a little more damage. Yep, those two spiders, that's just equivalent to four bullets we might have fired. One, two, three, four. Get the fight done with that much faster. Thank you, defensive items, for saving me from silly damage. 
Honestly, I'm not worried about this run. I know I could use Judgment to boost my deal with the Devil Chance, but because it's already at like two-thirds, I'm not going to, and I regret that decision. But next floor, it's guaranteed. As far as getting to boss rush, I often do not get to boss rush. I just take a little too much time. And maybe I don't clear rooms as fast as I could. Maybe I explore too much. I certainly min max more than I need to. But I'm not worried about not getting to boss rush. That was well worth it. I'm going to check for a secret room. Um, you know what? Let's save the bomb we just spent. Oh, that's Fanny Pack. I was quiet for a second, just trying to figure out how we got that, but... Fanny Pack. Like Evil Eye and Mom's Wig, I don't really think about it much, but... It provides a pretty decent benefit. Fanny pack, not as much as the others. Ooh. Paperclip. Flatworm is helping us hit enemies, and we have a lot of keys, but... Maybe just because... I can't believe I got out of there. Oh, boy. Ooh, but fanny pack gave me a key. Will the key still be there? No, but I'm not gonna get hit on purpose again just to try and get a key. Since we have two Guppy's items, I'm already thinking about how much I want Guppy's tail, and Paperclip is kind of doubling down on that dream, just saying, you know, wow, that happened faster than I expected. Well, let's just pop some bombs, clear the room, use Glowing Hourglass. I completely lost my train of thought, but that's alright. That guy's dead this time around. was I talking about? Probably going to bother anyone watching if there's anyone watching. <laughs> but, you know what, that's okay. So, right now, Depths 1, 1829. Oh, I was not even doing anything. That was bad. You know what? This room is going to take a while. I don't want to do it again. We have lots of HP and 9 lives. I am going to accept that damage as the penalty for not paying attention. And maybe it will teach little Eden here a lesson to get out of the way of disembo disembodied floating skulls with brains in the back. Is that a skull or is it some sort of like stitch skin like on Greed and the Keeper? Normally I would assume that color would be bone, but the way it s looks stretched and wrinkled probably isn't bone, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's the same gray, fleshy tone we see on our other friends. Um, this card is Joker. Alright, so Judgment. I don't know what I was saving Judgment for. I should have used it on the Cave 1 to so get a better deal with the Devil Chance there. But, given that we have a guaranteed deal with the devil on this floor, as long as we don't take red heart damage, I'm not going to use the Joker on this floor. That means I'd really like to take the Joker with me in the future, which means I'm not going to use Judgment for deal with the dub purposes, so let's just judgment. pop it on this floor. It is a Demon Judgment, which is nice. Fanny Pack is exactly what I was hoping to use here. Ooh, please. No, no, no. Okay, let's pop these. Uh, wait a second, pop the others in case it's paralysis. Yes. Hey, balls of steel. The others are pretty forgettable, but not actively harmful, but balls of steel is a helpful addition to any run. Just to have in the rotation and to get the benefit right now. These guys are annoying, but they will be dead soon. And you know, I was just about to start complaining about how we didn't get any DPS upgrades, but that's not true. Besides Mom's wig, experimental treatment increased our damage, and I didn't 
think about it, wow, synth oil is great, and it's our second syringe, giving us a great shot at spawn, and with the paperclip, I will trade a key for a bomb, because we have so many keys, and we don't need them for golden chests. But I forgot to acknowledge Binky. Binky is a small tiers upgrade, or maybe just a normal tiers upgrade, the 0.7 tiers up, or whatever it is that most give. But it's been really helpful to our damage, and wow, synth oil, I am really noticing the benefit here. This is... This is not what I want to take to the next floor, but this is enough for this floor. This is enough to get us... And this is enough to survive for a while. Until we get something else. Alright, I am going to do a quick check of something here. Alright, I am back since this was my f is my first time really doing this. I just wanted to... There's no excuse for that one and I have to just accept it. I wanted to check that the video was recording properly. Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, I've heard people advocating for this item, saying it doesn't get enough credit, and that might be good. And honestly, I would trade Lemon Mishap for Dead Sea Scrolls, but Glowing Hourglass just has too much potential. Not to do anything drastic for us, but if we end up in a really dire situation, which unfortunately I could foresee happening if we don't get anything else here. I wish he would jump back. I'm gonna have to walk all the way around. But. Glowing Hourglass has the potential to save us damage. I will trade one Spirit Heart for all these consumables. And... No, we don't need the Red Heart, because we already got that Demon Dungeon at the payout. I will check the shop. The Greed Fight is fine. This is the Death... Oh yeah, this is the Death 1. This run is pretty slow, no chance of Bosch Rush here. A better player probably could have gotten it there, but... That's not how I play. I like to not explore everything, but at least get everything I find useful out of a... Oh, if we didn't have glowing hourglass, I would have been really disappointed about that one. And that's why I'm taking glowing hourglass over Dead Sea Scrolls, because it just has too much potential to save me from silly mistakes like that. Especially when... I'm talking throughout my entire game, which I wouldn't normally do, and just have that little extra bit of distraction. You think there's a secret room here? Well, you think there's one there? Okay, well, there's not one there, I'm done looking. Adversary is annoying, good thing we have a lot of bombs to speed it up. And this is where I'm really glad we got Binky and Synth Oil, or we would have been just miserable here. And used a lot of bombs. I will not blowing hourglass with one damage. I shouldn't have taken that damage, but I was a little focused on getting all the red fire skill. So, Adversary gets a lot of flack. Surprise, that dodge worked. For being a hard boss, and it is entirely deserved. I'll admit, I'm used to having a little more going for me at this point in a run. But, Evil Eye did some good work there. I'm not going to take any of these in case they're telepills and cost me an idea of the Krampus, not what we're looking for. So, Adversary was challenging, but not that bad. I'm not going to use Glowing Hourglass because I have had times in the past where I used Glowing Hourglass on a Krampus fight and then could not get back into the deal with the devil. Krampus's head. Um, I'm not going to take it. It's fine. Infested? That's really all there is to say about it. I'm happy to have Krampus's head, but... Right now, Glowing Hourglass is saving us from silliness. I am going to definitely do this with no boss rush. I think this is where we use the Joker card. Cricket's head would be worth fighting this room if we had to, but we don't. Oh man, can't believe I got out of there. 
Okay, so we could use... Okay, we're definitely using the Joker card. We have two Joker cards. Spirit of the Night is going to help a lot. Our speed is still not good. Oh, and you know what? I should right now take a second, just in case anyone wants to play this seed and try it for themselves, just try a really pretty vanilla Isaac run so far, not too strong, not super weak. I'll give you the seed, which is 6LJL64MQ. And I'll try and make sure to remember to post it in the description of this video. Wow, Paperclip is really paying off. I would love for one of these stone chests to contain Yuffie's head. Face reward is not what I was looking for. Just another okay item. It helps, but not in a really noticeable way. I would rather have it than not have it, but only barely. Because in the past it has also messed up my familiar rotation, put a little brim too far back. Um, that Demon Judgment is interesting because he could give us our third syringe, which would be a really big moment in the run. And it's interesting that we're only one away, one item away from Guppy and one item away from Spun. Our speed sucks, but because of that Demon Judgment, I am going to take this lard. The Demon Judgment and Fanny Pack and this arcade. There are just a lot of ways for us to use two, and a joker card. There's a lot of ways for us to use two red hearts, and I'm really gonna hate it if we don't get a speed upgrade, but I'm really gonna love it if we get speed ball from that demon judgment and spun. So, this sucks. It's gonna keep us from getting, oh, well, we weren't getting the hush. And now we're definitely not with Lard. It's going to slow us down. But... This run... This run is doing well. But it still could use something else. Hanged Man card, not useful anymore. I'm going to spend a little time picking up HP. Not a lot, because our speed is so bad. But I really do want to see what that Demon Judgment gives us. I really want it to be Roid Rage or Speedball, but any syringe is fine by me. Growth Hormones. That's what I want it to be. Lover's Card. Good time for it. I'll walk in and out so that it lines me up and I don't miss any plays. That's not really what I wanted. Another... Well, no, that item's not really useful in any way. I'm never... That was my bad. But also, I'm going to blame that a little bit on the really poor speed. Still, our damage has grown a lot. Um, yeah, missing page two will do some damage, but only if we take damage while we're already at low health. And I'm just having a hard time imagining a situation where we're, we need to rely on that damage unless this is what we're rolling with on the cathedral. Speed up pill. Speed up pill is a huge quality of life improvement. It makes it easier to dodge and just makes it take less time to get from place to place. We've done all we need to do here. I'm not going to... I recognize that I could play that arcade over and over, hoping for Blood Bag for a speed up, but that's a very. That's a little more min maxing than I might want to do. That's the sort of thing I would have done when I was first really getting into Afterbirth, looking for 1001%, and trying to get used to, you know, every possible way I could break the game. I remember when I first figured out about the D20 on Freeze mode, that was a good day. Oh, yeah, we've been here. Well, it does suck a little that we got to deal with the devil naturally. That was a pretty low percentage chance to get one. And it makes it less likely for us to get one here. But we have a Joker card. I am going to play this 
Which I know goes against what I just said about farming a donation machine or blood donation machine for a blood bag speed upgrade. But there's a big difference. That don blood donation machine wasn't all the way across the map. Big shout out to Halo of Flies for blocking some more damage. And you can tell this run has gotten quite a bit better because... I mean, first of all, because of how much faster we're killing enemies. Even much tougher enemies this late in the game. But also just because... I'm not using glowing hourglass very often. We're not taking that much foolish damage, and... There's really... Plenty to go on here. Oh! I'm getting a phone call. I'll be right back. Hello, folks. I'm back. All right. This is a big moment here. Guppy, guppy. Not guppy. But... Eh. Ne completely neutral. Got one spirit heart. Lost one spirit heart. It's fine. Just cost a couple seconds. And I suppose now that we can fly, we can actually use Glowing Hourglass to check every curse room for free. Curse... Getting distracted on a curse in the Lost Floor is annoying because it does make me forget some of the layout when I have to take a phone call and come back to it. Got peace set. Not copy this. I'm avoiding taking any of this. I was about to say I can't believe we got out of there, and then we didn't get out of it. You know what? I like that spirit heart more than I like anything we got in there. I'm avoiding picking up red HP because, although I could try and play that blood bank, I don't remember where it is, and. Permanent Polaroid invincibility is a lot more valuable than a couple cents and a chance at a speed up. Now I know that I could make sure that I stayed in permanent Polaroid invincibility. Oh, where do we go now? Okay, good. Guess properly. And hey, I didn't take damage on that room. It's a good thing we can fly because it's really hard to dodge on that narrow walkway. I can't decide if I like that, if that room is worse, or the similar room in, oh, the caves or the depths or something, with the same narrow walkie, walkway and something like six boom flies floating around the room. Just... Ooh, almost took that HP. Would have regretted that, or would have regretted having to glowing Argos the room. Oh no, this is not the right way. Where do we go? But yeah, narrow walkways in a game all about dodging are not fun. Okay, I'm pretty sure we explored everything down that path. Let's try down. Good luck. I haven't been down before. Now, I know that if he eats a bomb, it doesn't... I'm pretty sure it consumes the bomb and doesn't have any tear effects, so I wonder if it would do more damage. Thanks to Mr. Mega, more damage just to put it beside him, but considering that he's dead now, and it only took a couple seconds, that's just more of a theoretical wonder. Maybe someday when I'm having a weak run, but I have sad bombs, Mr. Mega, and I have to fight Chubb on the second floor or something, that's when I'll remember, oh yeah, I could get through this a lot faster. One of the things I like about Afterbirth is there's just a at this point there's just a lot of good bomb synergies. I know most of them already existed in Rebirth. Hot bombs and sad bombs and Bob's Curse were all there. Mr. Mega. Um I really should glowing our glass that. There's not a good reason not to accept layer laziness. But I think just the addition of two items really added a lot more depth to that, which is Bomber Boy, especially 
makes every bomb synergy that much better. Not everyone likes it because there is much bigger risk of hitting yourself if you forget, but Bomber Boy is just so good. It does so much damage because, for those of you who didn't know how the item works, it doesn't just increase the explosion radius like Mr. Mega does, it actually creates five separate bomb explosions. And so, if you have hot bombs, or sad bombs, or anything else that benefits from bomb explosion, it'll go off five times. And Bomber Boy is one of those... Bomber Boy is just one of those items with so much potential, I'm always happy to get it, even if I don't have anything that synergizes with it, because... I don't have... I get hit by it, but I don't find it that hard just to remember, oh yeah, I have Bomber Boy. Don't stand next to it. Oh, we win. Guppy's head. This, this has been a very great, smooth, traditional run. Nothing crazy. No Ipecac. Not even anything that changes the look of our tears, death touch-wise. Just slowly increasing in power, and then finally, getting Guppy. So, for those of you who don't know, when you collect three Guppy items, in this case, Guppy's head was the last one, then nine lives and Guppy's hairball, even if you don't hold on to them, which I'm not doing in the case of Guppy's hairball, Sorry, Guppy's head, not Guppy's hair, but I got distracted by the damage and deciding whether or not I was lazy enough to knock blowing our glass. Dagoz, excellent. And another blank ring. Arcano, fine. What Guppy does is, every time one of your tiers hits an enemy, it spawns a blue fly. These blue flies are your friends, and they'll flock directly to enemies and do two times your tier damage. We don't need anything anymore. But I want to see how I do against these bosses. I don't have Missing HUD 2 active right now. I often use it in my own play, but I'm not using it in this video. It's only a mod that makes stats visible, and if you'd rather I use it in my videos, please leave a comment. Let me know that you like it. But, anyway, Guppy spawns these blue flies every time you hit an enemy. And, essentially, that means that every shot you fire does three times as much damage, because it does your tier damage when it hits, and spawns a blue fly that does twice that damage and homes in on enemies, and carries between rooms. So obviously, the Guppy transformation is one of the most powerful effects in the game, because there are very few things that just straight up triple your damage with no downsides. It also gives the ability to fly, but we already have that. And it makes us very cute. It gives us a little tail. But by the point in the game where you get Guppy, you almost always have a bunch of other items, disfiguring your character model, which is one of the draws of the game, I suppose. But a bunch of other items disfiguring your character model to the point where you miss out on the full cuteness of something like Guppy. Because I think I can barely see the cat ears in our facing upwards sprite. But and it's nice that we can actually see our character's face at this point. So yeah, this has just been really great. I'm just happy this run is going so well. Uh, that damage isn't great, but our damage is. So I'm not really going to worry about that screen. It's great to get a deal with the devil here. I don't like these items, but I will... T well, I like Gempy. I don't like this, but I'm not going to take it because we have this Joker card. I was just thinking about... What if our next deal with the devil only has red chests and 
we actually fill up this red heart container. Wow, a fourth guppy item, which we, which isn't actually any use on its own, because Guppy's Collar has a 50% chance to revive us if we die, but I don't know if you've seen how well this run is going. I don't expect to need nine lives. Certainly not with another great HP upgrade like that. So instead, at that deal with the devil, we picked up Dark Matter, which does three things. First, it's our first item that makes our tears look different. They're into these weird shadow orbs. Completely unlike the shadow orb I was talking about from Literal Horn early in the run, but still pretty cool. Sacrifice room. Do I want to fight Mega Satan? Maybe. If we get more HP. Um, Dark Matter also gives us a small to medium damage up. Nothing huge, but worth getting. I don't recall the actual number. And it has a chance. It reduces the size of our tiers because of the new. Uh, I don't know whether to call it particle effect or just like graphic or sprite, maybe. I don't know. Smaller hitbox on our tiers, which can make it a little harder to hit enemies, but almost always worth it because it's a very tiny difference and it gives you a good damage upgrade. And fearing enemies means if they can move, they'll run away from you. Well, if they move based on the a boom... I don't know about boom flies, but some enemies that only move in certain patterns won't change those patterns. Um, that was... I'm not going to say that was a good dodge. That was not good. Alright, so there is a sacrifice room. We could play that to get the key pieces. And although it's not going to leave us with any HP. I feel like on my first run I owe it to all one of my viewers to fight Mega Satan. That spirit heart means we won't have to die for it, probably. Yeah, definitely. As long as we don't take damage. But because we have nine lives, we're gonna keep sacrificing health to this until the point um, still don't care about Guppy's collar. To the point where we fight some angel, angel statues, or maybe it's actual angels that are just statues when you see them. Okay. We'll fight the angels, kill them, gain the key pieces, and fight Mega Satan. I've always wondered, you know, this game doesn't tell you much directly, but there's a lot you can apply, you know, about how Isaac dies in the chest and other interesting things that I'd be happy to talk about. I haven't mentioned much about the religious themes in this game, besides just mentioning that they exist. But obviously there's a lot going on here. Half the items are religious themed. You actually literally fight Satan. I've been taking item, trading health for items with Satan all game. Judas is shadow. We'll double our damage if we die and respawn as Dark Judas, but because we have nine lives, we would have to die a lot. Oh. Sorry for the brief pause. Someone popped into my room to say hello. And we're back again. Alright. So, I collected that full key piece from those two angels, which means I can go fight Mega Satan. I just need to go through that door and stomp him. You'll notice I haven't done that already. Uh, second Mr. Mega doesn't do anything, but you get those five more bombs, which we don't need to use. But again, this is my first run. It's become quite strong ever since Guppy. First run on this Let's Play series. Obviously not my first run with the game. I'd be... Not to say I'm the best player in the world, but... I'd be pretty happy with myself if this is how I did on my first time with the game. Now this is 500 hours of practice later. So since this is my first run on the Let's Play, and it, we're strong enough, why skip the chest? The chest is the most fun floor to watch for fighting all the bosses, in this case not very very long, but 
just for the chance that they can drop items. And who knows, you know, just finding Ipecac on the ground could give us something entirely new to play around with. Or, you know, the Cancer Trinket. Full health. We don't actually have a high enough tier rate that Cancer Trinket makes a huge difference, but... Hey, it never turned down minus two tier delay. The reason Cancer is so much more effective, the better your fire rate is, is because there's two stats determining your fire rate. Really one stat. Mm, one on it. I don't need to decide how many stats it is. But there's your tiers, which is part of some complicated formula involving a square root and some addition and subtraction of all that stuff most of us probably did in middle school. Yes. Or are doing in middle school if you're a young viewer. But what actually affects how fast you fire is your tier delay, which is just how long in between after one shot comes out, how long is it before the next shot comes out. And when you start as Isaac or Maggie or one of the default characters, that number is 10. Which means you are firing, I think, let me see, I think at a tier delay of 1, that's 1 every 4 frames, something like that. But, I won't concern myself with technical numbers. Basically, the higher your tiers is, the faster you fire up to a certain point, the lower your tier delay is. The lower your tier delay is, the faster you fire. And just getting tiers upgrades like Binky that we got earlier in the run, or others like Sad Onion and so on. See, you know it's a good run when I don't even mention that we're fighting the final boss. Or what would be the final boss if we were going to finish. But those regular tier upgrades only go so far. There's actually a tier cap, where a soft cap, where after you get enough tiers upgrades like that, you'll you hit five five tier delay, twice your starting fire rate, and no amount of normal tiers up tier upgrades will make you fire faster than that. But it is possible to reduce your tier delay. Here we go, Mega C. Reduce your tier delay lower than that through items like soy milk. Or, in this case, the Cancer Trinket, which its only effect is to directly lower your tier delay by two. So, you know, if you have a tier delay of... If you have, I don't know, no tiers upgrades and picked up Eve's Mascara, which doubles your tier delay, at the, but also doubles your damage, you'd have 20 tier delay, and this minus two tier delay would only take you from 20 to 18, really not much of a difference in the damage output you're doing. But, let's say you're at the tier delay cap, and it takes you from 5 to 3, all of a sudden you're firing 5 thirds faster, 60% faster, and if you manage to get double the effect with Mom's Box, or if you had Cancer as well as a couple other tier delay reducers like Guillotine or Mom's Perfume, I believe. Or am I remembering that wrong? I'm making that up, that Mom's Perfume reduces your tier delay by one. Anyway, if you had a tier delay of three, Cancer Trigger would reduce it to one, triple your fire rates, kill, you fill the screen with tears, and kill every enemy. So, alright, we have defeated the first phase of Mega Satan. Big scary guy who's a little less big and scary when you have this much damage took out his second form resurrection. Still never figured out if killing the angels was the right thing to do or not to help take him down, or evil because, you know, you're killing angels. But we have beat the run, we're watching the final cutscene, which I normally skip, but yeah, what the heck, we're this far in, let's play it through. Just some nice heartwarming scenes for the kids. And that's going to wrap up my very first Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Let's Play video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If 
you really enjoyed it and you want to see anything I put out in the future, subscribe. And because I'm just beginning this video series, I'm very happy to hear any sort of feedback you might have. So feel free to leave that in the comments. And that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching.